Good morning and happy Easter. I am so glad that you decided to join me this morning. Now we have been learning for the past three weeks, this is our fourth week, of why we celebrate Easter. And this is going to be the last week because this is Easter. So we're going to learn the final part of the Easter story today. Now please continue to join me for the next couple of Sundays until we can meet in person because we will continue to have lessons and continue to sing together and worship together. So even though our Easter story is over, we will continue to have lessons. So let's start by offering a word of prayer. Jesus, I want to thank you so much for the story of Easter. I pray right now that you will just teach us something new that we have never heard about you. And we just give this time to you just to use, to challenge us and encourage us and just teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, I want to go over our verse. So, so far, I've only had one person tell me they know it. I know more of you know it. So if you do know it, please have your parents send me a message so I can make a list so I can make sure the teachers know when you get back who gets their prize. So you have two more weeks to do your verse. So continue practicing it. Continue doing your song so you can continue to memorize it. All right, let's do our verse together. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Let's do our other verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, continue to practice that. And to help us practice this morning, we are going to do our Bible verse song. So enjoy. still sinners Christ died for us hey man hey man but God demonstrates his own love for us in this but we were still sinners Christ died for us hey man hey man for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this, but we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Amen. Keep practicing that Bible verse so you will have it in your mind and in your memory. All right. Well, I want to move on to our story time. So we have been talking all about Jesus's life, right? We learned him being born and we learned about all sorts of things he did. And then last week we learned about Jesus dying. Jesus died for our sins. We talked about that. Well, that is not the final story of Easter. So... I want to introduce to you our final story. This is the final story of Easter. 
Enjoy the video. After hanging in agony on the cross for hours, Jesus cried out, It is finished, and he surrendered his spirit to God. Despite his sadness, Joseph of Arimathea, a man who was secretly a disciple of Jesus, knew that to ensure Jesus had a proper burial, he had to do it before the quickly approaching Sabbath. Grief-stricken, Joseph went before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to ask if he could remove Jesus' body from the cross. After Pilate gave him permission, he and Nicodemus went to the cross with a large amount of myrrh and aloes to anoint Jesus' body for burial. Together, Joseph and Nicodemus carefully wrapped Jesus' body in strips of linen with burial spices in accordance with Jewish tradition. Near the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden where a tomb had been cut out of the rock, something only wealthy people could afford. This tomb belonged to Joseph, and no one had yet been laid to rest there. It was in this tomb that Joseph and Nicodemus laid the body of Jesus. Before they left, they rolled an enormous stone in front of the tomb's entrance, sealing it shut. Before the sun had risen on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene gathered the spices and perfumes she had prepared to complete the burial customs for Jesus and made her way to the tomb. When she arrived, she discovered the giant stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Deeply distressed by what she had seen, she ran as fast as she could to tell the disciples Peter and John what had happened. They've taken our Lord's body and we don't know where, Mary exclaimed. After hearing Mary's account, Peter and John sprinted to the tomb. John arrived first, but he did not enter the tomb. Without hesitation, Peter walked into the tomb and noticed that the strips of linen that Jesus had been wrapped up in were laying empty in a pile, and the burial cloth that was placed over his head and face was neatly folded next to them. As John entered the empty tomb, he didn't fully understand what had happened but he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Puzzled by what they had seen, Peter and John returned to their homes. Too upset to return home with Peter and John, Mary Magdalene remained at the empty tomb. As she wept, she looked up through her tears into the tomb, and she saw two angels in dazzling white robes. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot, Seeing Mary's tears, the angels asked, Woman, why are you crying? Still sobbing, Mary replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. As Mary turned away from the angels to make her way home, she saw a man had been standing behind her. But this was no ordinary man. It was Jesus. Somehow Mary did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, still thinking he was the gardener, begged him, If you have taken him away, please tell me where so I can get him. Then Jesus called Mary's name, and suddenly she recognized that the man was Jesus. She exclaimed, Teacher, and fell to her knees to worship at his feet. Jesus told Mary to go tell the disciples. After hearing Mary's report of what happened at the tomb and that she had seen Jesus, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors, afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Suddenly Jesus appeared among them in the locked house and said, Peace to you. The disciples were overjoyed to see Jesus with their own eyes. After Jesus had shown them the wounds in his hands and his side, he told the disciples that they would continue his mission, going throughout the world and preaching God's love. All 
right. So that is the final story of Easter. So Jesus died and then he was dead for three days. And then after three days, he rose from the dead. He was no longer dead anymore. He came back to life. That is pretty amazing that God died on the cross for our sins, but he didn't stay dead. He overcame that and he has more power than death, that he overcame death. It's a pretty amazing story. So that is the story of Easter. So I hope if someone asks you, why do we celebrate Easter? You will tell them, you know, it's not about Easter bunnies. It's not about chocolate and candy. All those, those things are wonderful. That is not why we celebrate it. We celebrate it because we are celebrating Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and coming back to life. It's pretty awesome. Well, if you want to actually hear this story in your Bible um, or read it yourself, you can look it up. The story that you just heard is actually out of the book of John. Um, many of you probably know this, but there are four books in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're called the Gospels. And these four books tell all about Jesus's life. And every single one of them tell about Jesus coming back to life, Jesus dying and coming back to life. But they tell it in a little bit different ways and they tell different details. Well, the book of John actually tells it in the most detail. That is why I chose the book of John for you today. So if you want to look it up, make sure you look in the book of John. I'm sure your parents can tell you exactly where it's at because it's towards the end of the book, but I'm sorry I don't have the exact reference for you. So, all right. Well, I want to close this in a word of prayer and then we'll do our final song. So join me in a word of prayer, please. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much. Number one, for dying for us, for dying for our sins. And I also just praise you that you are stronger than death, that you came back to life. We just love you so much. And we are just so thankful for the story of Easter. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, our last song is the same song we did last week because I feel like it's so appropriate for Easter. The song says he came from heaven to earth. So Jesus came from heaven to earth to show us the way, it says. Then he says, from the earth to the cross. He died on the cross for us, right? My debt to pay. He paid our debt, right? We talked about he took the payment of our sins. And then from the cross to the grave, because he did die. And then he says, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Because he didn't stay in the grave. He rose from the grave. He rose from the dead. And he overcame death. So I feel like this song is just so perfect for Easter. So I hope you enjoyed us praising God through this song. Because that is what worship is all about, is just telling God thank you and telling him how much we love him. So enjoy the very last song. And I hope you and your family have a wonderful Easter today. I'll see you next week. Bye. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises.
I love to see. 